Hi, welcome to Gemstone Tarot. This is your weekend forecast for Saturday the 25th, Sunday the 26th, New Moon Solar Eclipse. If I could make the camera go dun 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 like that, I would, but I can't. <laughs> so let's just assume that I did. Thank you for those of you that have sent me suggestions on how to say single without single. I've written a few of them down, although of course I don't have people's real names, but I can I can do it by YouTube handles. So we've got Denkar777, Flirty Friday. Yeah, it's still Flirty Friday today. We've got Glitter Sunflower who says uncoupled. I like that one as well, actually. Laurie Darling says singalicious. Quite like that because you get to do that whole singalicious thing with your tongue. And I've got Shauna Tate, independently occupied. I thought that sounded almost political, it's like politically single. It's quite, I, yeah. Are you available? Yes, I'm independently occupied at the moment. <laughs> I might use that. So, people, I did have a quick look on the houses that we're going to be affected by. Now, that doesn't make any sense. I looked at each sign, each astrological sign, to see which house was affected by the new moon solar eclipse. That's better. So, very briefly, Aries, it's in your 12th house of destiny, a portal opening for profound messages. Taurus, 11th house of friends and associates. There is some destabilisation of the relationship of a group of friends. Gemini, 10th house of career, opportunities for professional growth. Cancer, 9th house of big ideas, personal growth visions will come to you. Leo, 8th house of investments, sudden changes, particularly in community property and investments. Virgo, 7th house of partnerships, could go either way Virgo. Libra, 6th house of your daily routine, that can get a shake up. Scorpio, 5th house of fun, there could be some conflict between what you want to do and what you have to do. Sag, Sagittarius, 4th house of home and it could be mending a deep family wound. Capricorn, 3rd house of immediate environment, that's your neighbourhood, close colleagues at work, that sort of thing. Aquarius, your second house of money. There could be some sudden shocks, changes, gains or losses in finances. Pisces, it's in your first house of the self and it's in your sign. Complete transformation. Nothing but the best, Pisces. <laughs> Can't wait. Right, so I wonder what to do today for my eclipse special. It's not really a special, it's just that it's the eclipse. So I thought I am going to take one card of all of the tarot packs that I've got out on the table. And I am a bit like a kid in a sweet shop with tarot packs. Oh, see, I want to take two of these and I can't, so it's going to be that one. Yeah, I love, 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 love tarot packs. So we could be here all day if I did all the ones I've actually got. And it's my birthday, I'm February Pisces, so it's not actually my birthday today, but it is my birthday in February. So I probably will have a lot more tarot packs <laughs> by the end of this month. So do look out for me coming on with new oracle cards, new tarot packs. Nothing I like better than a new tarot pack. One. This is really exciting, one of each. Let's hope it makes a good reading. One of these dinky ones. Thank you for likes and shares and subscribes and also, oh, that one for comments. Has to be that one. And also for those of you that have booked private readings, I'm still doing my three to four day wait which isn't too bad for a turnaround. Still $20 for nine cards and they last about half an hour. So if you want one, you can book one below. I'll do one of these animals. Oh yes, I love you. And then I'll better limit myself or we could be here all day, people. 
We've got to have a romance one, haven't we? Got to have romance angel oracle. I must compose some kind of filing system as well, because at the moment the floor is my filing system. So in all tarot readings, private readings, and God knows what, you just see my head disappear <laughs> as I'm rummaging around on the floor looking either for some sort of astrology book or something or one of my packs of cards see i'm eyeing them up now oh you my pretty you okay barely got any room to put any decks down let's just move my massively heavy crystal ball which fell on the floor the other day, which can't be a good omen, can it, people? Okay, let's see what we've got. Wow, I haven't had that on before. By gum. Okay, this does make sense. First of all, Rider Waite, Nine of Swords. Some of us are staying up at night and worrying and each worry is the sword of Damocles above our head. This is a recurring, recurring, I cannot speak today, a recurring pattern. It's um, those worries at four in the morning that keep repeating themselves going round and round and round your head and you actually get nowhere with them. Now sometimes this is being all in your head I feel for lots of us this is to do with um, a romantic relationship of some sort, just looking at these other cards, to be honest. Now we do have Guardian Angel. Lovely card to have. So when we're up at four o'clock in the morning, that is a good thing to remember. If we can even feel that we could just hand it over, it may not... You know, this is the search for solutions. It's a very ego-driven, um, I don't mean arrogant, but ego-driven human way to try and solve a problem. Doesn't really work very often, in my experience. We have a guardian angel. Hand it over, over during this eclipse. Whatever the situation is, and I'm looking here, I've got my little angel. Absolutely gorgeous, this little angel. Hand it over. To the guardian angel. There you go. Now, in the middle of this, we have the captive man, who I have never drawn before. See, you shake it up a bit and look what happens. Yeah, okay. The captive man says a lot about the darker side of fairy. Fairy women, especially fairy queens, have always desired a human male companionship. And they aren't very particular about how they go about getting it. What's he saying about us? The captive man is blinded by fairy glamour and can't see his way clear of the entanglement he's trapped in. Men and women can be trapped by false perceptions. We easily become enamoured of someone or something that is not what they appear to be. We're blind and deaf to the warnings of our friends and continue to believe in something that may well be doing us harm and is certainly keeping us in thrall to false ideas. If captive man appears, we must ask for clear sight. We need the help of our true friends, fairy and human, to see what binds us. When we finally see the truth, we can begin to free ourselves from those harmful ties. Just as the fairy queen is loath to give up her human lover, a situation in which we are trapped by false perceptions may seem impossible to escape. Asking for true insight is the best way to begin. Conversely, we may be the captor imprisoning a person when we should be giving them freedom. By releasing a thought or a person from captivity, we give it the space to truly become what it needs to be and we often find that it stays with us. Now this is also about this card. Release those fears. This keeps us captive. And for some of us, it's a question of hankering after someone who isn't... We've had a lot of readings like this recently. There's a common theme. This person is not all they're cracked up to be. Now, for some of us, we've got the Knight of Cups. 
For some of us, this is to do with a water sign male, usually a male. Could be a female because actually they, are, they can be genderless, but I'm thinking it's a male in this case. Pisces, Scorpio or Cancer. It's a borderline situation. For some of us, this person is a really romantic and fun person that we're really tempted by. And for others, he could be tipping over into more of this, which is perhaps romantic and tempting, but maybe inconsistent. You know, you never quite know where you are with them. And that is the true attraction. For others, it could be a water sign person coming in. But again, just be careful that everything is as it seems, is the message that I'm getting. We've got donkey, five of fossils. For some of us, we're feeling, feeling it with the finances and we're feeling it with the spiritual, um, in our spiritual bank account. We're feeling a bit overdrawn. That's the way I see that. It's been a bit of a long haul, definitely, for some signs more than others as well. It's been for quite a lot of signs. I mean, the eclipse, don't forget as well to check out my eclipse readings. I've done um, mid-February readings for each sign, including this eclipse. Mirrors a lot of this and also the tower and the death card honestly came up in about 90% of the readings. People are having a rough ride. A lot of people are having a rough ride. They're feeling spiritually bankrupt. Meditate on your guardian angel on this eclipse weekend. Calling in your soulmate. You've got something worth meditating over. Look at the state of him and her, fellas. Your prayers, affirmations and visualisations will help bring you together. Now, this is the card that says... Your soulmate is already out there. You two have yet to meet. But actually, the whole meeting part of it, that's just the fish and chips of the situation. I don't know if Americans will know about fish and chips. That's a British delicacy. <laughs> it's the nuts and bolts of the situation. When you're manifesting, especially in something as powerful as an eclipse, the manifesting is what counts. The results are virtually guaranteed. You don't have to worry about the logistics of whether you'll meet him on Match or her on Match.com or whether you should go to this particular place at this particular time. In fact, that level of control won't be helpful in this situation. Hand it over. Hand over your deepest desires. Don't spend too much time on the earthly plane worrying about people like this who aren't worth your cosmic time and aren't worth your heart and soul. You may want them with parts that are particularly below the belt, but the actual heart and soul of you is much more than that. And what you want has a much deeper resonance than that. What you truly want for true happiness. Calling in your soulmate. They're already out there. All you have to do is call. You don't actually have to call them. <laughs> Just call out. Say you're ready. So that is my reading for the eclipse. A mixed bag of various tarot cards, but actually a very similar message. Definitely leave me comments about how the eclipse affects you. I am dying to know. And I will let you know how it affects me if I'm still here to tell the tale. <laughs> Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And if you want a private reading, you can book it below. Okay, have a good weekend. Bye.